Good morning. Good morning. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to read uh, from a couple different passages to start out with. The first one's over in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We started looking at these uh, Christmas passage, I mean Christmas season uh, messages, but with that text. I want to go over to Luke now, which uh, actually conveys the events as they unfolded as the Lord uh, Jesus took on flesh. Luke chapter 2. I'll get there. Luke 2. I think I'll get there. Here we go. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census excuse me, be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While there were... were, While they were there, excuse me, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were ter- terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at these things, at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. As we have been looking at for the past couple weeks, this is our third week, and then next week we'll actually have our Christmas program with a lot of special music and looking at the Christmas story again. It'll be almost four weeks we've been doing this. We've been between books, and uh, I didn't want to jump into a study, but for me, this has been a real blessing. Uh, Actually, we had Christmas yesterday with my entire uh, family, my sisters and their their, uh, children, and uh, the in-laws that was married into the family. We had, I don't know, about 35 or so in our home, 
And uh, we read these very texts together and uh, prayed and praised God uh, for, for our Lord Jesus, for his coming. And that's what I've been trying to, for all of us is to instill in us in this time, not a dread that we often have when we come into this time. We're overtaken and overwhelmed by just the whole uh, spectacle of what has become Christmas. And our Jesus tends to get lost in the shuffle. And if not lost, relegated to a very small place. And that should never be for us. We shouldn't dread it. We should glory in this season, uh, the opportunity to worship Him in light of what, what He did uh, in His incarnation, what it means. And so we, we've been looking at that these past several weeks. Uh, and it is a wonder as to what occurred when, when He entered, our Lord Jesus entered time uh, and took on flesh. What was made possible and what became the reality for all, us who, who do believe. Uh, the potential in Him for all mankind, but for us specifically. And, and this morning, I, I just want to kind of run through some of these things. It's not exhaustive. Because I could go into the theology of the various points of this means this and this means that. I'm going to stay rather general in, in these things. But there are many that are obvious uh, things uh, that, that, that are to be considered. They're to be gloried in. Uh, they answer the question, so what about Him coming? What does that mean? And, and it, it means everything, to be honest with you. But we need to stop because when we stop and we consider these things, then he starts taking the rightful place. It's not just a story. It's not just a birthday. It's the entrance into history of the Son of God who would become the Savior and provide for lost men. And so we need to, we need to stop and pause, slow it down. I truly believe throw it in and to stop, not just slow down, but stop. Don't, don't let it get run over. Because if you don't do it, and, I, and I'm not willing to do it, who is? Who's going to take the time to turn their friend's eyes to the, to the, to the, to the, the incarnation and ultimately to the cross? Who's going to do that? Who's going to take those family moments that you have to read the Scripture and say, this is what it's about. Truly, this is what this season means. And bring it into perspective. So that, that, that's what we're doing. So this morning, I just want us to consider the gift, if you will, that has been given to us who have believed. There's many things uh, that have happened. One of those things has to do just with his entrance into time and taking on flesh and living among us. Many people recognize the historical Jesus. Even religions that do not realize or recognize him as the Son of God, as the Messiah, as the Savior even. They, they at least recognize as a historical figure and they respect the fact that he lived among us. But for us who believe... He came and He lived in this world. He walked amongst us, dwelt amongst us, as one song uh, we just sang stated, and He served to provide an example of how we ought to live, how we ought to be towards the sinner and toward the saint, how we should be. And, and that is so powerful for us. We lose sight of it. Go back. You ought to read, every one of us, I, I truly believe this, all of us ought to read the gospel, at least one gospel every year. At least one of the gospels. One of the gospels. I'm not saying that should be the only book. I'm saying read the other scriptures. But include it in your reading. If you're not going to read through the whole scriptures, read one of the gospels so that you can see how he lived. How he related to the to the, the 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 diseased, the hated of society, the sinner, as well as the saint. How did Jesus treat 
humanity? How did he treat the children? It's his gift to us. He came. I mean, do we understand that? He entered time. It's his story. I get it. But he entered history. And he lived in the flesh and walked amongst us. So that's number one thing that we have. One of the one things we have in the incarnation. Through his entrance, through his incarnation, through what, through what he came to do, his very death, to, to take that flesh where he was born and he became flesh, he, his purpose was ultimately to take that flesh to the cross of Calvary and die there. For unto us has been born a what? A Savior. You only need a Savior if you're in need of being saved. And the fact is, is the whole world needed a Savior. And because He came, there is a Savior. He is the Savior. So there is a path of salvation because of the birth of Jesus Christ. Because He came. And I think we all glory in that. I mean, I, I, mean, I do. Uh, that, that's what I, I, I thank you God for coming because I'm thinking of how lost I was and how hopelessly uh, in, 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 uh, in how, what's the word? How hopelessly lost, if you will, I was or you were or we were without Him. There was no changing it. There's no changing it. The whole Old Testament looked forward to this moment. That He was coming. That he would, there would be this advent of the Son of God. And He would take on flesh. Why? Because we needed a Savior. We needed a Savior. And He came. Praise God. We're told in Scripture, by the way, that not just one of us needed Him, we all do. You know the passage. We've, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've also know the passage in 623. The wages of that sin is death. But we also have declared in the same verse, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's the condition. And we're told there was no other way but this one who was born, who entered the world, the Son of God, who took on flesh, lived among, among us, and took his perfect life and laid it down as an offering for our sin. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And what? No one. Some of you can, but no, it doesn't say it. It says, no one comes unto me but through him. Through him. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come unto the Father but through me. Jesus said that. But through Him. Acts tells us, 4.12, what, how many names? How many denominations? How many religions are out there? You, you can go any way you want. As long as we're all going to the same place, you get there how you can get there. I'm going to tell you something. Do you realize how insulting that even that idea is? Have you ever thought of how insulting that is to what this whole message is about? To ever even say that is to just spit in the, in the face of the gospel and the, the, and the, and the work of of, of God the Father and Jesus the Son and even the Holy Spirit of God, but in specifically in the incarnation and the entire story of Jesus Christ. If we can say there's many names by which you can be saved. There isn't. That's why we rejoice in this season. That's why we give Him a day on the calendar. His birthday should mean something to us. It should be celebrated. It should be Something that, that, that and we and I get it. There, you got these people who want to debate. Oh, we don't even know if it was the twenty fifth. I don't care if it was the thirteenth or the twelfth or the first. I don't care. He was born, and he deserves a he deserves a season that's celebrated, especially by the people who know it. There's no other way. There was nothing. There wasn't anything 
we could do to change the situation until this child, this, this son of God took on flesh and he entered the world. And hope sprang. And it did spring eternal for those who believe. It did. So we have that. We also have, in light of that, and the fact that he did come, the fact that he did go to the cross, we have a resurrection. He didn't just stay there. He was exactly what was declared on his birth. It was Emmanuel. The prophet said, this will be the sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name what? Emmanuel. God with us. He was exactly who he said he was. And death can hold God down. And the death he experienced was the ultimate in death because it was separation from one who didn't owe any any separation. He didn't owe a debt. I owed the debt. You owed the debt. We owed the debt. This world owed the debt. And he died there on the cross. And because of that, they buried him. And three days later, because he's exactly who he said he was... That tomb was empty. And there's a resurrection. So there's hope. This this message, and by the way, if you went through the Pentecost study, one of the most staggering moments for me in that whole study, as far as the textbook itself, was when Pentecost brought up the fact that they wrapped him in swaddling cloth. Never thought about this in all the years that I've been a pastor. Never really thought about it. And he said that they wrapped, not only did they wrap babies in cloths, but they also, it was the way they wrapped the dead. And so in the manger, even in the manger itself, in the way they wrapped him, in the, what's described there in the language, it was a picture that that child was going to face death. Yeah, I was like, well, I missed that one for years. But it's staggering because it's exactly what it is. One year it happened to me. Here, I couldn't hardly talk for, for you. Well, you say, well, that's no big deal, Pastor. We've seen you there many times. And that's true. You have. But the reality is, is one year we had communion on Christmas morning. And I'm sitting here and I'm looking down and I was referencing the manger. And I looked down and saw the communion cup. And that's what it was all about. The bread and the cup. That baby was born to provide not only for our our sin, but to to provide the hope of life in him. There was death there. And he rose again the third day. So we have that hope. Another thing that we have, because of this baby, because of our Lord Jesus coming and becoming incarnate, taking on flesh, you have a purpose. We have a place and a purpose. And you say, well, what's this have to do with... It has everything to do with it, with the the season. It's remembering what you have because He came. We have... Think about this. Satan came to usurp all that God is and all of God's purposes and twist it and manipulate them and pervert them and you, you... Take them every direction and keep us from realizing that place and purpose. But because we've trusted in this one who was born to us, our Lord Jesus, and because of what he did, we're called the church. You realize that? We're the church. You know, what's the church? It's a call. We are the called out assembly. We're the people of God. We have a place in time and our purpose is to cry forth the gospel of Jesus Christ and see people saved and add to our numbers and to disciple them in the truths of the, of the message of Jesus Christ and who He is and bring people to maturity in their faith. That's your purpose. You say, well, yeah, okay, that's just work He had for me. No, you didn't even have that. You understand? We didn't have that until he came. And he did what he did. And it was all part of this whole plan. And we we should stop and think about these things as we come into these, these moments. 
This is one that's very powerful to me. I was thinking about it. Hebrews talks about it. The book of Hebrews. Hebrews 7, chapter 7, and, and also 10. By taking on flesh, and it says he partook of the flesh. That means that he shared in the flesh. Not only he became that, but he shared in the realities of what it is to be a human being. And you said, well, that's great, Pastor. That's awesome. I'll write that one down when I get home. Well, add this to it. Add this to it. Because he did that, and he did it for this reason, he can sympathize with us in our weaknesses. See, he doesn't just look at us with a critical and a harsh and a judging eye that's out to just say, wrong. You failed. He doesn't do that. He's looking with you with love when you struggle, when you fall down in your faith, when you trip and you're, and you're caught in your sin. He sees us. He's able to sympathize with us because of this. Because He took on flesh. He, he took it on. He was tempted in all ways just as we are yet what? Without sin. He understands everything and anything any human being can ever face. Do you believe that? Because I think a lot of times we think that you know, he, he missed this one. Lord, where were you? I'm going through this. Where are you at? And I'm going to tell you something. He knows right where you're at. He does. And he knows what you need in the moment. And he's right there for you. You say, well, I didn't feel it. He was there I'm telling you. He was there. And he's able to sympathize with us. He's, he, he can get there because He took on flesh. It's part of the reality of Christmas, of this season. He took on flesh and He became a high priest that we can go to who was able to sympathize with us. I get it. I get it, Dan. I get it. Do I have to confess my sin? or my? Yeah, absolutely. But He understands it. Satan's ready to charge you and push the eject button on every one of you. You know that, right? I mean, if it, if it, if it had your name on it, it'd already be pushed. <laughs> and we'd be landing in the lake of fire, a whole rainbow of us going in. All of us. Because that's what he's all about. Jesus sympathizes with our weaknesses and he pleads the blood. He's our advocate. He said, I was born into this world. I lived, I fulfilled the law, the, 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 the need that they had, what they couldn't do. I did it. I did it. And I died for their sins and I claimed the blood over them. That's our Jesus. All because he took on flesh. He can sympathize with us. Then we also, the fact that he uh, came means he's coming back because he is exactly who he is. And I love that. We're studying it in Sunday school. Uh, we're studying the second coming. And uh, you say, well, he's throwing a commercial in. I always want to throw a commercial in. Sunday school is awesome. And we, we're, we're looking at the sign of his coming. And he's coming back. Because he came and was born in this world as Emmanuel, God with us. He is who he said he was. He was crucified he was buried and he rose again and he ascended into heaven where he awaits the word and he's coming back. I believe the last person that needs to get saved, when that happens, we can start looking for him to get here. So if you really want him to get here, I'd start witnessing. <laughs> if, you, if you don't like your situation, start sharing the gospel with people who have never heard it or need to hear it because he's not coming until they're saved. And once they're saved, then he'll, then he'll make his determination and he'll come back. But it's all in his timing. But the beauty is, 
is that he is coming back. We have that. We have that. It's, it wasn't just that this story never ended. You understand? That's the beauty of it all. Started in Genesis right on the hills of the fall. Really, it started before that because we have them all three at the creation. Elohim, the plural form uh, term of God. We have them all there. But in, on the hills of the fall, we have the promise of the cross, the Son. And the story does not end. And the beauty is, because of who He is, we're part of that story for all eternity. That's why we celebrate it. That's why we should slow down and think about these things. I'm not preaching a passage at you. I'm just preaching the reality at you. I'm telling you the passages are there. They're all over the place. They're in Scripture. We need to slow down and see it. This time of year is the time we should do that. We should not lose sight of the fact that the second person of the one triune God stepped out of glory. He thought of the interests and placed the interests of others above himself. You understand that? This is the creator God. This is the son of God who placed our interests ahead of his own and stepped out of glory, relinquishing those things that testified or were his, his visible glory, the independent use of his attributes. We just read about it. He set them aside. He didn't clutch them greedily. He said, no, I got to let this go so that I can be what I need to be to provide a path of salvation for for lost mankind. And you know what? You could put your own name in there for Dan Laramore. You could put your name. Every person, he, 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 he went to the cross for them. We can't lose sight of that. We should never lose sight of that at all. And this season should be a season of rejoicing. I, I pray that we get there because I'm tired of the believers and we're always down. We're always whining. We're just, we need to rejoice in what we have. We're saved, people. We're born again. We have a Savior who is Christ the Lord. We have a message. We have hope. We can tell people of, of what happened, what this is about. Do you understand why you put that manger scene in the yard? Do you get it? Let, let's talk about this a little bit. Let's read this together. This, this day. I realize you don't really believe this, but I do. And it means a lot to me. And I want to share this. I'm going to read this. Because at least there, you, you, you'll admit there was a historical Jesus. Let's start there. And let's just read what the Bible says. And, and, and start it. But we should never lose sight of it. But I have to say this. Because it, 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 it's staggering because I've been looking at this too, and I, and I don't know whether I'll do it next week or because I've got a couple different things I want to do in wrapping it up for the program. But only God would have done it this way. You realize this? We would have never have done this. And, and it's, it's powerful when you stop and look at just that. When you look at this manger scene, it's, it's, it's shocking. He didn't choose to come in royal uh, fanfare. He didn't pick the, the, the biggest city even to be born in. He picked Bethlehem. He didn't pick kings. They were, they were years getting there to be there for it. They, these guys didn't get it. They, we got them in our major I got them in mine too. I understand. And, and I've been told set them across the room. <laughs> The, the, you know, put them on the, over here with their camels like they're coming. And that's how it should be. We should have it set up because they weren't really at this event here. The, he was already, uh, I, he was already uh, gr- not grown, but oh, at least two. Yeah, at least two uh, when they got there. So, but the thing is, is the shepherds, think about that. The shepherds were the ones who God chose to be some of the first witnesses 
witnesses of it. He wasn't born in a palace. He was born in a stable. He wasn't laid in a royal crib. He was laid in a manger. He wasn't only wrapped in claws. He was wrapped in the swaddling claws. But those claws also represent, that's the same way they wrap up dead people when they die. I mean, all of these things, the whole thing just is a mind blower, how God did this. And I told you that there was that song that that stopped me a while back, and I'd heard it many times, but it it, it speaks of Joseph's Joseph's, uh, struggle with coming to grips with how, why would you do it this way? But I love that the shepherds were there because they were the lowest of the low. And Jesus does it always. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It, he chooses the weak and the outcasts. And he started with that. I mean, I just think it's a powerful image altogether. He's out to save those in need. And they range from the richest right down to the vilest. And I praise God he chose to save those, those vile ones because I, I fall in their ranks. I don't know where you fall, but I know where I was. But this song was a strange way to save the world. I just want to share the words of it, especially the chorus. But it, it reads this way, uh, and I'm not going to do multiple times, but you'll get the gist. I'm sure he must have been surprised. And this is coming from Joseph's perspective. I'm sure he must have been surprised at where where, where this road uh, had taken him. Because never in a million lives would he have dreamed of Bethlehem. And standing uh, at the manger. Uh, let me make sure I get this. He saw with his own eyes the message from the angel come to life. And Joseph said, and this way, this is the song. Why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the world? Why here inside a stable filled with hay? Why her? She's just an ordinary girl. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. And then he says, but this is such a strange way to save the world. Isn't that powerful? It is. To think of how it could have been if Jesus had come as he deserved. There would have been no Bethlehem, no lonely shepherds at his birth. But Jesus... Yeah, but Joseph knew, excuse me, but Joseph knew the reason love had to reach so far. And as he held the Savior in his arms, he must have thought all the chorus again. Why me? Why here? Why her? Why? Why? This is such a strange way to save the world. You know what I say? Thank you, God for saving it just the way you did. His ways are not our ways. And He does it wonderfully. And this time of year is should be a wonder for us. It really should. We should not let it pass. We've had three weeks together just focusing on this, touching on these realities. We have one more next week, our program. And I just pray, I truly do, I pray that we're, we, we're slow, we've slowing down here in this. And we're, we're, we're starting to see and give Jesus more of a place because of the time we're spending here. This is part of it. Really, we're doing it right here, even now. But let's do it as God gives us opportunity with the ones who need to hear as well. That's my prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you blessed us with again this morning just to share uh, together in your word considering the truths of the reality of what it was, what's occurred, the power of, of just the, 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 the birth and what it means and how far-reaching it is. 
Lord, and, and how blessed we are with all of it, Lord, as believers. I do pray for us in this season. Lord, it, it's fast approaching the day. And uh, I just pray, Lord, that we'd have that time together as, as believers, but even as families with unbelievers, where your message would be uh, proclaimed. And we would share it in a way that speaks of our own heart of worship and adoration for all that you are and all that you've done for us, Lord. Bless each one for being out, Lord. And again, we lift up our brothers and sisters and our family members in very tough places in this time, Lord. Uh, This time of year, it makes it even that much harder. I just pray that you would be with each one of your children as they go through the the place that you have them. Pray that uh, they know your presence and your grace, Lord. But thank you again for each one here today. Bless as we go out and meet the week ahead. Help us to count for you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.